to the chapter India Relief Features. This slide presents the overview of the chapter. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to Define a relief feature Explain the relief features of India Identify the location of India in the world Explain the geological background of India Illustrate the major relief divisions of India that is the Himalayas, the Indo-Gangetic Plain, the Peninsular Plateau, the Thar Desert, the coastal plains and the islands. India is a country that covers the greater part of South Asia. It is a country with varied diversity. In India, most of the places are located in the river valleys and other places are located in the mountains. The country has a great diversity of relief features, that is, features related to landscape of a particular area. It contains all the major physical features of the earth like mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. Its physiographical diversity includes lofty Engfold mountains, flat plains and one of the oldest plateaus of the world. The major relief divisions of India are the Himalayas, the Peninsular Plateau, the Thar Desert, the Indo Gangetic Plain, the Coastal Plains. The islands. Now, let us study about the location of India on the globe. India is located in the northern hemisphere of the globe. It is the seventh largest country in the world with a total land area of 32,87,590 square kilometers. India's geographical location leads to a variety of vegetation and life forms and also helps in growing various kinds of crops. In India, irrigation of crops mostly takes place from the water provided by the rivers flowing from the Himalayas. In other areas, the water required to rise crops is provided by monsoon rain. Trade routes and fishing can be carried out in India as it is located on the Indian Ocean with a long coastline of length 6,100 kilometers. On the globe, India lies to the north of the equator between 8 degrees 4 minutes and 37 degrees 6 minutes north latitude and 68 degrees 7 minutes and 97 degrees 25 minutes east longitude. The central longitude 82 degrees 30 minutes east is considered as the standard meridian for India and is the reference for IST, 
Indian Standard Time, which is five and a half hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time (GMT). The Standard Meridian, 82 degrees 30 minutes east, passes through Mirzapur city near Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. Now let us study about the geological background of India. India's geographical position is a result of plate tectonics. It is the shifting of enormous rigid crustal plates over the Earth's underlying layer of molten material. The world land forms originated from two giant lands: Angara land, Laurasia. and gondwana land which was named by austrian scientist edward suess india was a part of gondwana land more than 200 million years ago gondwana land got split into pieces and the peninsular indian plate moved towards northeast and came into collision with the eurasian plain angara land With the collision and compression force, the evolution of mountains occurred through a folding process over millions of years. The present existing Himalayas are a result of this process. A large basin was formed with the breaking of the northern corners of the peninsular plateau. The flat northern plains of India are a result of this basin which got filled with various sediments deposited by the Himalayan rivers from north and peninsular rivers from south. On earth's surface the peninsular plateau is one of the most ancient land blocks. Let us now look at the concept map of the Himalayas. Now let us study about the relief division the Himalayas in detail. The Himalaya mountains are the highest mountain in the world. The name Himalaya means abode of the snow. It is a mountain range in Asia which separates the plains of the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau. The Himalayas are spread across India, China, Nepal, Bhutan, and Pakistan. The Himalayan ranges run in the west-east direction in the form of an arc with 2400 kilometers of distance. The width of these ranges varies from 500 kilometers in the western regions to 200 kilometers in central and eastern regions. Following are the three parallel ranges of Himalayas: Greater Himalayas or Himadri, Lesser Himalayas or Himachal, Shivaliks. Now it's time to know about each range in detail. Let us begin our learning with Himadri range. Click each tab to know more. Himadri. The northernmost range is called as Greater Himalayas or Himadri. It consists of highest peaks with an average elevation of 6,100 meters above sea level. It is composed of snow and ice cover.
glaciers can also be found here. The water from these Himalayas is the source to the perennial rivers. Let us now learn about the Himachal Ranges. Himachal. The part of range which is found south of the Himadri is called as Lesser Himalayas or Himachal. The height of these mountains ranges from 3,700 meters to 4,500 meters. These ranges mostly contain compressed rocks and hence have the rugged relief. The lesser Himalaya ranges include the famous valley of Kashmir and the Kangra and Kulu in Himachal Pradesh. The region which is quite famous for hill stations like Simla, Mussoorie, Nainital, Raniket, etc. The Pirpanjal and Mahabharata ranges are the most important ranges of this region. Let us now learn about the Shivalik Ranges. Shivaliks Shivaliks are the southernmost ranges of the Himalayas. Their width ranges from 10 km to 50 km, whereas the altitude varies between 900 m and 1100 m. Different names are given to these ranges in different regions. In Jammu, Jammu Hills, in Arunachal Pradesh, Mishmi Hills, in Assam, Sachar. The valleys lying between the Lesser Himalayas and Shivalik Ranges are called as Duns. Examples Dehradun, Kotli Dun, and Patli Dun. Let us now learn about the Purvanchal Ranges. Purvanchal The Purvanchal hills lie in the northeasternmost part of India and are the eastern extension of Himalayas. They cover the states of Assam, Manipur, Tripura, Nagaland. Regionally, the Purvanchal hills are called as Patkai Hills, the Naga Hills, Manipuri Hills, Kasi and Mizo Hills. The Purvanchal Hills are composed of sedimentary sandstones. Various views of Himalayas are shown on screen. After learning about the different ranges of the Himalayas, let us learn about the influence of these mountains on the climate. The Himalayas influence the climatic conditions of India in many ways. Some of these influences are During severe winter, they protect the plains of India from the cold winds of Central Asia. They are the reason for summer rains and monsoon type climate in regions that are behind the western Ghats. The Himalayan rivers contain a lot of silt and make the plains very fertile. Let us do an activity of mapping the ranges of India. Let us now look at the concept map of the Indo Gangetic Plain. Now, let us discuss another important relief feature of India that is the Indo-Gangetic Plain. The Indo-Gangetic Plains is also called as the North Indian River Plain. It is a large and fertile plain covering most of northern and eastern India.
The formation of Northern Plain is a result of the interaction of the three Himalayan rivers, Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra and their tributaries. Almost 20 million years ago, it was a shallow basin. But as time passed by, it got filled with various alluvial soils which were brought by these rivers from the Himalayas. are of three parts. They are the western part, the central part, the eastern part. Let us learn more about each of these parts. Click each tab to know more. This part was formed by the river Indus and its tributaries, that is, the Jhelum, the Chenab, the Ravi, the Bias, and the Sutlej. The Indus River Basin is largely located in Pakistan, excluding a little portion of Punjab and Haryana plains in India. This region has the two features, that is, the features of land between two diverging or converging rivers. The Central Part it is called as the Ganga Plain. It extends from the rivers Gaghara to Tista. It is spread across the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Haryana, Jharkhand and West Bengal. It is the place where rivers like Ganga, Emuna merge and get distributed into their tributaries Sone, Kosi, etc. The Eastern Part The Eastern Part mainly exists in the Brahmaputra Valley of Assam. Apart from forming the Indo-Gangetic Plains, the rivers flowing from the Himalayas cause deposition of gravel and pebble sediments leading to the formation of a narrow belt. This belt is situated parallel to the foothills of Shivaliks and extends between 8 km to 16 km in length. The belt region can be studied under the names of Babhar and Terai. The Bhabar Belt, a belt which is adjacent to the foothills of the Himalayas and consists of boulders and pebbles. The Bhabar is a narrow belt of 8 km to 16 km wide. The Terai Belt, a belt which lies next to the Bhabar region and is composed of newer alluvium. The region is mostly moist with thick forest as it is swampy and marshy. 
It receives heavy rainfall throughout the year and includes a wide variety of wildlife. Let us now look at the concept map of the Peninsular Plateau. Now, let us discuss about the relief feature, the Peninsular Plateau. A plateau is a landform characterized by a flat-topped region that is elevated above the surrounding lands. Indian Plateau is called as a Peninsular Plateau since it is surrounded by the sea on three sides. It is composed of old crystalline, hard igneous and metamorphic rocks. Huge amounts of metallic and non-metallic mineral resources can be found in the Indian Plateau. Now, let us know more about the Peninsular Plateau. The Peninsular Plateau includes two divisions which are as follows. Malwa Plateau, Central Highlands, Deccan Plateau. The Central Highlands can be found south of the Gangetic Plains and north of the river Narmada. Here, the most important plateaus are Malwa Plateau on west side and Chota Nagpur Plateau on east side. The Chota Nagpur Plateau is rich in mineral resources. The Deccan Plateau lies to the south of Narmada. The Deccan Plateau's north edge consists of Satpura Range, whereas the eastern edge consists of Mahadev, the Kaimur Range and a portion of Michael Range. The western, eastern and southern boundaries are formed by Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats and Nilgiris respectively. Now, it's time to study about the Western and Eastern Ghats. Western Ghats Western Ghats run parallel to the western coast in a north-south direction. They extend from the river Tapi, central India, to Kanyakumari, Tamil Nadu. These ghats are continuous with a very few passes in between them, which form the gateways of the coastal plains. Udagamandalam Uti is the famous hill station along the western ghats, located in Nilgiris. Here, the highest mountain is the Dodda Betta, 2,637 meters. The Western Ghats are joined by Nilgiris near Gudalur rising the height of about 2,000 meters. Eastern Ghats Eastern Ghats run in a northeast to southwest direction, parallel to the eastern coast of the country. They extend from Mahanadi Valley, Orissa to Nilgiris, Tamil Nadu. These Ghats are not continuous. The differences of the relief features of Western and Eastern Ghats are shown on screen. Now, let us know about the Thar Desert. The Thar Desert is situated in the western part of Rajasthan, India. It is the world's seventh largest desert and consists of sand and rocky outcrops. It is located on the leeward side of Aravalis and receives a very low amount of rainfall ranging from 100 to 500 mm per year. It has an arid climate, little or no rain, and poor vegetation cover. Streams appear only during the rainy season but disappear soon.
The only river in this area is Luni. The internal drainage rivers merge into lakes and do not reach the sea. Let us now look at the concept map of the coastal plains. Now let us learn about the coastal plains. A coastal plain is an area of flat, low-lying land adjacent to a sea coast. The southern part of Peninsula Plateau is bordered by narrow coastal strips along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. The western coast starts from a place called Ran of Kutch and ends at Kanyakumari. The western coast is more narrower than the eastern coast. The western coastal plain is uneven and is divided into three parts, that is Konkan coast, northern part which touches Maharashtra and Goa, Kanara, Middle part which includes plains of Karnataka. Malaba coast, southern part which mostly in the state of Kerala. The Bay of Bengal East Coast plains are wide, have large surface structure and are very fertile. These plains start from Mahanadi in Odisha to Kaveri deltas in Tamil Nadu. The rivers which help in the formation of these plains include Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. These coastal plains have different local names like Utkal coast in Odisha, Sirkar coast in Andhra Pradesh, Koramandal coast in Tamil Nadu. Let us now look at the concept map of the islands. Now, it's time to know another major relief feature, the islands. Generally, an island is defined as a piece of land which is completely surrounded by water. The word island came from Middle English word island, which in turn came from the Old English word eggland. There exist two groups of islands in India. They are Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar groups of islands are stretched in the Bay of Bengal. These are the portions of submerged mountain paths which run from Myanmar mountain or Kanyoma. In these islands, Narkondam and Barren Islands are of volcanic origin. Indira Point was the southernmost tip of India in the Nicobar Island. But it got submerged due to unfortunate tsunami which devastated the entire world in the year 2004. Lakshadweep Islands These islands are of coral origin. The total geographical area covered by these islands is 32 square kilometer. Lakshadweep Islands are popular for a wide variety of flora, plants and fauna, wildlife.
Take up the following activities. Locate the three Himalayan ranges in your atlas. Locate the following places on Indian physical map of your atlas. Shimla, Malwa Plateau, Masuri, Bundel Khand, Nainital, Bhagel Khand, Raniket, Raj Mahal Hills. Using a physical map of India, trace the course of Godavari and Krishna to identify the direction of slope of Deccan Plateau. Identify rivers that flow in the northern side of central highlands. Compare the relative heights of western and eastern Ghats as well as Tibetan Plateau and Himalayan peaks. On the physical map of India, identify the delta regions. Are their heights similar or different? How do they compare in relation to the Indo-Gangetic plains? Look at the world map and write a few lines about India's location with reference to the places marked on this map. Which of these data are for rising and setting times for the sun at Ahmedabad and Imphal? Explain your answer. Using the raised relief map and physical maps in your atlas, make clay or sand models of India on the ground. Use different types of sand or soil to mark different types of relief features. Ensure heights of the places are proportional and rivers are marked. Look at the vegetation map in your atlas and try to use leaves and grasses to decorate them. Maybe over the year, you can also add other features of India into them. You have successfully completed the chapter India Relief Features.